Hey, what's up everybody? Jesse here with Southern Reels Fishing and in these next two videos or this two video part series, I am going to talk about sheep's head and pretty much tell you everything that I know about catching them. So let's do it. Okay, so the sheep's head, it's a North American species of fish that ranges from Cape Cod all the way down to Florida, Gulf of Mexico, as far as Brazil. Has a silverish body, five to seven distinctive vertical marks running down its body. Sometimes it gets confused with a black drum. Big difference is the black drum who look very similar, but they have a downward facing mouth and they lack the human-like teeth that sheep's head have. And they're very famous for it. They have rows of incisors up top, rows in the bottom, back molars, which is what they use to eat their typical diet, which ranges from crabs, live shrimp, barnacles, even some small bait fish and plant matter as well from what I read. They can grow to about 30 inches in length. The lifespan's about 20 years. The world record was called in 1982 in Louisiana on a live shrimp and it weighed 21 and a quarter pounds, which is a big sheep's head. Typical habitat is around pretty much anything in the water that grows barnacles or is a home to like crabs and anything like that because that's what they eat. They hang out around it, which would be jetties, uh, piers, shipwrecks. Like I said, pretty much anything in the water, even boats that have been sitting there for a while with barnacles on them, they'll have sheep sit around them. Uh, they live in pure salt water uh, in the ocean, all the way into the inlets, brackish conditions, even all close to almost pure fresh water they have been caught. So they can be found in a lot of different areas, which is pretty cool. They have a very white flaky meat when you cook them, which is very delicious. It's not oily, it stays moist. And honestly, it's my family and myself's favorite fish to eat, which is pretty cool because they're fun to catch too. Okay, as far as what bait to use to catch them, Fiddler crabs, that's my number one choice. They call them sheep's head candy for a reason. I mean, they're just the perfect size. They got the one big arm, little arms, or the females have just two small claws. They can be found in the salt marshes, tidal areas and stuff, low tide, you can go out there and you'll see them running around. That is the absolute best thing to catch sheep's head on. You can also use mangrove crabs, uh, blue crabs, if you cut them up and quarter them, live shrimp works. I hear about that down south a lot. I've actually caught them on clam as well while fishing for spade fish. So they have a pretty diverse diet. You can catch them on a lot of different things. Uh, even barnacles works. I've heard of people scraping barnacles off of pylons when they run out of other bait. Use a, a pick or something to poke holes in them, stack them on a hook, drop it down. They'll take that too. All right, now as far as the tackle that I would use to catch them, it really depends on the size of the sheep head in your area that you're catching and you kind of want to scale your tackle based on that. They range in size dramatically. I'm telling you, a 20 year old sheep's head that's, you know, 24 plus inches is a huge fish and a heck of a fight. And you're definitely going to want some heavier tackle, but let me show you what I use typically. All right, for a smaller sheep's head, a little 2500 battle two combo is what I typically use. Uh, this has 10 pound braid on it. I would run like a 15 pound fluorocarbon leader. I just tie direct to the main line using a modified Albright knot. The pole here is rated for six to 15 pound braid. It's the perfect size, extra fast action. As you see, the tip on it's very small, but uh, this is really nice on the smaller sheep set. I'd say up to a, probably about, I don't know, 16 inches or so. This will work just fine. Now for the larger sheep head that I catch like out in the Chesapeake Bay, you know, all around the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel, I use a much stouter setup. For those, I actually prefer these reels here. This is the Quantum AC101 HPT. I love it because it has a flipping switch on it and I'm able to actually just flip the switch on and off. Basically you push it down and when you let go, it automatically re-engages. You don't have to crank the reel. These are awesome because it allows me to work my way down the pylon with one hand while I still have the other hand steering the kayak or controlling the trolling motor on the boat. It's just really effective tool and it's got plenty of drag and muscle to get these sheep set up. This here is a uh, 13 Fishing Muse Black swim bait rod. They actually don't even make this anymore. It's eight foot long. It's extra heavy action. So, I mean, it's rated for up to 14 ounces of weight. I love it. It has a small eyelets and stuff, and it has no problem getting these sheep's head up. But I wouldn't use this in a kayak because it's a bit too long. For that, I use the Star Rods Stellar Light. It's a PG12201SM. It's a seven foot rod. It's rated for five eighths to two ounces of weight. Extra fast action again on the tip. Plenty of muscle to get those big sheeps hit up, provides a good fight. Seven foot length is like perfect for most kayaks. So that's what I use for that. 
and I would pair that same quantum reel right on this that I have on this other rod. I just pretty much switch it back and forth between boat or kayak fishing. On that reel, I have 20 pound braid, which is more than enough to get these fish up, but I do run like a 30 pound leader uh, just to make sure it has a little more abrasion resistance, especially against their teeth. As far as the hooks for the smaller sheep's head, I use J hooks or bait holder hooks. This is a number one hook um, that I use for the smaller sheep's head that I catch and it ranges all the way up to a three alt hook uh, for the bigger. In Chesapeake Bay bridge tunnel, this is typically what I'm using is a three O hook, a three alt hook from Gamakatsu. It's a bait holder hook and it works very well. I've caught almost all the sheep that I have in my channel on this particular hook. So once again, just kind of scale your tackle based on the size of the fish that you're catching. It keeps it more fun. You want to use as light of a line and as light of weight as possible when you're next to these pylons or in any situation that you're fishing. That way it's more sensitive because their bite is a very particular bite to get used to. So as far as the tackle, that's pretty much what I'm using. I'll get into the other stuff, you know, when we start talking about the rigs. All right, now I'm gonna talk about fishing rigs or setups to catch these fish. To me, there are four basic ones. A dropper loop setup, a Carolina rig style setup, a jig, like a bottom sweeper or something like that, and a float setup, which I'll explain that later. I'm gonna talk about the one that I use first, which is basically just a hand-tied dropper loop. This is just a double surgeon knot on 30 pound braid. I basically just took the line, made a loop in it, tied a knot, overhand knot, went through a second time, tighten it up. And that's pretty much how I make the dropper loop right there. Then on the bottom of the rig, the same thing, just double it back, do a surgeon knot on that. And all you gotta do is just take the loop. I like the loop here because it's easy to change sizes of weight quickly. See, I pulled that weight right off that quick. All you gotta do is just take your loop, you know, just stick it through the eye of the weight, you know, pull it right back over like so, and you've changed your weight if you need to. I like bank sinkers, which are these here. I think they're the cheapest that you can get. There's no metal or anything on them, nice rounded edges. I get snagged a lot less using these particular sinkers. Uh, as far as the fluorocarbon line, I don't really buy leader material because it's so expensive when you buy those little spools of leader material. What I get is these rolls of Seeger fluorocarbon. This is actually fishing line. This isn't leader material. It's the same thing, pretty much. And this is a tenth the cost of leader material. The abrasion resistance is exactly the same as the leader material. And Salt Strong has actually proved that in their videos. So buy this, it's way cheaper. This is the setup I use. I would tie this directly to my main line using a modified Albright knot. I don't use any swivels or anything like that. It's an easy knot to tie, it's very strong. Very rarely does it ever fail me. And that's pretty much it. Just throw the crab on here and send it down beside a pylon. Now you can do two. You know, if you wanted to tie a second one on here, you can very easily do that. And just, like I said, double it back. And then you just bring it through the hole twice. You know, and then you'll have another dropper loop. You just put your other hook on that. Same way you did your weight, you just stick it through the hole, run it over the hook, tighten it back up. And then you have two crabs down there. I typically only run one myself because of the extra drag. You would be surprised how much extra drag and heavy current that another crab and hook gives this rig. You would almost have to use another ounce of weight to be in the same situation. And using two crabs like that will go through your crab supply very quickly if you have a limited number of them. That's why I typically just use one. The only advantage to having two is that if you're down there and you get a bite and you miss it, you have another crab right there ready to go versus having to reel it up and check to see if they stole your crab or not. So if you got a whole bunch of extra crabs, throw two on here, you probably will catch more fish. All right, second setup is what they would call Carolina rig, basically. It's just a, you know, a bullet weight of whatever. This is a three ounce here, a little bead, a swivel, and then a leader going to your hook. Now this would normally be shorter. I just tied it quickly and it's a bit longer than it should be. I don't typically use these because you have tension on this part here, but this part here is just kind of out here floating in the current. That sheep said could come up and eat this crab out here and you never even feel it on this line. So that's why I don't really use this setup. Now, a lot of people do and there's a lot of sheep's head caught on these. I just prefer the other one versus this one because I just feel it's more sensitive because that weight is under the hook. You got that little short loop there with that hook. It's way, you're gonna feel anything that touches that crab. Now this is another way of doing that same thing using an inline trolling weight. You know, the weights that have the eyes on both ends. You buy one of these, 
Just tie your little leader right onto it, tie your main line like to this, and you can get right down there and do the same thing as a Carolina rig. I've used these before, they work, but once again, I don't think they're quite as sensitive as having the hook above the weight versus it being below the weight like that. And then of course you have jigs. This is a bottom sweeper jig, very popular. I use these all the time. These, honestly, I think are better if you're fishing the bottom, like if you're fishing a jetty from a boat or a kayak or it being, they're calling bottom sweepers for a reason. To me, they just work better on the bottom. If you're fishing sheep's head suspended on pilings, I honestly think you're better doing one of the previous rigs than these because I, I've tried back and forth each of them and I've always seemed to have landed more using hand tied rigs versus these. And once again, on the bottom, these are awesome. They're great for tall talk fishing and you can, you can catch them on them, but I would prefer hand tied because honestly it's much cheaper versus losing one of these. These are about four bucks a piece. The hand tied rig probably costs you a dollar, dollar fifty. Boop for thought. And of course, last but not least, a float setup. Maybe like a float setup for sheep's head, are you kidding? Well, this has kind of got a specific use. If you're fishing from shore and you're fishing jetty rocks, almost impossible to get out there without getting snagged. You're gonna lose stuff constantly. And what you could do is use a slip cork setup like this, which is basically a cork that has a hole through the center of it. And what you do is you take one of these knots here that you can buy. This is a rigging knot for slip corks. Basically comes in a little package like that. And you feed your main line through it, take this little piece of tube off and you tighten that knot up around the line and clip the string off. And then you'll feed a little tiny bead on, and then you'll feed this on, you know, your main line, and then run this out to a rig very similar to like one of these Carolina rigs here, pretty much. The whole idea of this is just to get you out there over those rocks, and you'll set the depth of this knot basically just a little bit shallower than whatever structure you're fishing out there. So you can cast it out there, and that line will slip through this thing here with that weight until it gets to this knot, and it'll stop. So these are really cool because you can set like a depth of like maybe 10 feet. Now, of course, if you had this thing fixed on your line, you'd have 10 feet of line out. You're not going to be able to cast it, but this allows you to reel that all the way up to swivel on your Carolina rig and cast it. And then that line will just slowly fall through this until it gets to this knot. And you've got 10 foot down basically where your crab is. And that'll keep it suspended. This will keep it suspended just off of that structure and allow you to fish it without getting snagged so much. Um, it works. I mean, naturally on pylons and stuff, you wouldn't need this. A lot of people catch spade with these the exact same way. You know, if you know spade or at a certain depth, you can rig it, same thing, and catch them. But it does work fishing from shore, like fishing jetties and stuff. It'll allow you to get out there without getting snagged. So this is the fourth setup that I was talking about. All right, guys, I want to talk about rigging bait on these different setups here. And the number one, of course, is going to be Fiddler Crab. Now, this is a live one I just went and grabbed out of my little crab attack that I have because I keep these pretty much year round. Um, and uh, just to show you, I mean, he's got this big, huge claw. People are so intimidated by it, but there's, there's, there's very little strength in it. He'll give you a couple good little pinches, but don't worry. You can just reach in and grab these barehanded. They're not going to hurt you. Um, so what I would typically do on the rigs that I use is take a hook, the three out hook like that. And I usually will go right in a back leg, right beside a back leg, curve it into the body and put it to where the hook, that's kind of hard to see I know, but to where the hook is basically in his body and just barely sticking out the other back leg like that is how I do it. And the other way would be to basically come up through the center of the bottom of the body and poke it out the top of the shell and have it to where it's pretty much like this and the hook is sticking out the top of the shell. That's the two main ways. I've actually had better luck the other way with going in the top of the shell first and poking the hook out the back because a lot of times it seems like the sheep's head attack from the leg side when they come up to bite a crab versus the other way. I have a better hookup percentage with it going that way. And just as equal of a good hook up percentage with it going into the back leg and curving out like that, pretty much out of the body. So that's kind of how I hook these guys up. I'm not gonna kill this one because he's good bait. I also pop the claw off and save it. And I'll throw them in a cup holder and hang on to them because I have caught big sheep's head just as quick on the claw at the end of the day when I run out of crabs. So anyway, that's how you would deal with fiddler crabs. Uh, blue crabs, you would basically just pop the legs and the claws off um, pop the shell off the top is how I do it and take some big shears and cut them into four pieces 
and then thread the hook through one of the old leg holes out through a piece of the shell that's still intact. That's pretty much how you would use blue crab. If you're using clam, I would pretty much just, you know, feed a big piece on the hook as much as you can and just kind of build it up to where it's a big hunk of clam. That works as well. Sand fleas are also a very popular one, same thing. I go in through the top of the shell first and come out by the leg hole. Once again, I've noticed that sheep's head tend to go for the leg portion of a crab or a sand flea. You'll get a lot better hookup percentage with coming through the top shell first and coming out underneath the sand flea versus doing it the other way. Um, and also barnacles is another popular choice. You break them off the piling, they got all the nice juicy bits in them. Use something like an ice pick to poke a hole in each one and just stack them up on the hook send them down by the pile and you can catch them like that as well. And of course, last would be live shrimp. Uh, we don't really have that too much around here, but they do down south. And those you would either hook through the horn on the front of the shrimp or through the tail and fish accordingly. So that's pretty much it for how you rig bait. Okay, folks, I think that's gonna be it for part one of the video. I didn't wanna make it too long each one. So I'll put a link above to part two and just we'll pick up right there and carry on. Thanks for watching.